Hello, my name is Dr. Vachirar Thaibuntinan, and I'm from the Institute of Human Rights and Peace Studies, Mahidon University. And I'll be giving a class on women's rights. So let's first look at why we need to demand rights for women. Women constitutes half of the world population. Yet, to our histories and all across society, women have not been treated as equal as men. For example, when, we, when men were granted the right to vote in the US more than 200 years ago, women were not given that same equal right. They had to struggle for another century in order for that right to be recognized. Although in Southeast Asian countries, for example in Thailand, men and women were given the right to vote at the same time, women in Thailand and in many other Southeast Asian countries still have to struggle for rights in other areas, including right to education, employment, equal right in marriage and family life. Because women have not been given the same equal opportunities and rights as men, the generally poorer are at risk from violence and their view are not taken seriously. And that's why it's important that the rights for women be recognized and promoted. But in order to do this effectively, we must understand why women have been discriminated against and what sustains such discrimination. So let's look at what it means by discrimination. The Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women, or what we call CEDAW, defines discrimination against women as any distinction, exclusion, or restriction made on the basis of sex, which has the effect or purpose of impairing or nullifying the recognition, enjoyment, or exercise by women, irrespective of their marital status, on the basis of equality of men and women, of human rights and fundamental freedoms in the political, economic, social, cultural, civil, or any other field. So basically, discrimination against women is any act of distinction, exclusion, or restriction made on women that limit purposely or unpurposely the enjoyment and exercise of equal rights for women. So why is there distinction, exclusion, and restriction made on women? In order to understand discrimination against women, it is important to understand the differences between sex and gender. Sex refers to the biological difference between males and females. That is to say, men and women have different biological and physical bodies. However, in addition to the biological differences, men and women are expected to behave differently in the society too. There are behaviors which are seen as typical for boys and men, and others are for girls and women. For example, women are expected to take care of children and a family, while men are expected to go out and earn a living. These social roles are called gender. Although there is some relationship between the biological difference between men and women and the gender role, it is important to recognize that gender is socially constructed. People learn about these roles and social norms through socialization process in the family, in the community, in the school, and through the media. And people act out these roles to conform with the social expectation. As a result, gender ideology determines what is expected of men and women, what is allowed for them, and what is valued for them. The gender ideology and social norms in our society tend to favor men. Men are believed to be stronger, more rational, so they are better in making decisions, or they are believed to be better in the public sphere, so they are natural leaders. And the qualities of women are believed to be of the opposite. And this has led to the unequal treatment and discrimination against women. For example, as men are believed to be more rational and better at making decisions, they tend to occupy a higher paid position, whether in the government or private offices. And as women are believed to be more caring, sensitive, and gentle, they are expect, expected to be more capable at caretaking jobs, which are mostly unpaid or very low paid. Statistics from the UN Women indicates that women receive only 60 to 75% of men's wages. Because of these inherent inequalities, the international community has pushed for the adoption of an international law specifically on women. 
This is known as the Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women, or CEDAW. Among other things, CEDAW tried to promote the ideas of what we call substantive equality. I will use a story of Aesop to illustrate what this means. A story of a crane and a wolf. A crane and a wolf are good friends. One day, a wolf invited the crane to his house for dinner. And the wolf said, OK, please come to dinner at my place. And the crane agrees. And when the crane arrives at the wolf's place, she found that the dinner was prepared and being served on a plate. The wolf said, please eat the food as much as you can. And the crane just looked at the plate and couldn't eat because she has a long beak. And the wolf was just enjoying his dinner. Of course, the crane was unhappy and went home hungry. And a few days later, the crane invited the wolf to her place and said, please come to my place. I will prepare a delicious meal for you. And so the wolf went to the crane's place. And once he arrived, he found that the food is being served in a vase. The crane told the wolf, please eat as much as you can. This is a delic delicious meal I prepare for you. And the crane starting, started eating her dinner. And the wolf just had to sit there and look at the crane because he could not stick his tongue into the long vase. So the wolf was unhappy and went home hungry. So how do we make sure that the crane and the wolf can enjoy their dinners equally? Well, if the food could be served in a container that is appropriate to the need of each animal, then they would be able to enjoy their food. CEDAR recognizes that there is biological differences between men and women, and also there is social construction of gender, which disadvantage women. So in order for women to access resources and enjoy the opportunity equally, there must be some enabling condition which would facilitate such process. This is especially the case for women who have been historically disadvantaged. And so there is something called positive discrimination, which basically giving favor to the groups that have been disadvantaged historically. And so this is the form of substantive equality which CEDAW tries to promote. Equality in CEDAW. There are many different ways to define equality. One of the most common being that everyone gets treated exactly the same way, which is called formal equality. While formal equality may seem the fairest, as the example of the crane and the fox shows, if the people are not the same, it may not make sense to treat them identically. For example, in the workplace, is it fair that women should not get maternity leave because men do not need it? The formal equality approach also does not take into account the existing and historic discrimination faced by women. The fact that women get less education or pay than men cannot be fixed by formal equality. Another model is the protectionist approach to equality. In this view, the role of equality is to protect women from threats to them. For example, Equality should ensure that women do not have to do dangerous jobs, like being a soldier, or that they should not have to travel at night because it is dangerous. A protection model will put in place special measures for women. Protectionism can be found still in many parts of society. For example, in education, girls are not encouraged to play sport because they may get injured. While this may seem to be good for women because it protects them, it bases the protection of women on the idea that they are weaker or more vulnerable than men. Further, it does not require a state to stop the dangers which women face, so there is no obligation for the state to make streets safer or actively stop violence against women. Substantive equality, as the fox and the crane shows, assumes that sometimes to create equality, Different people need to be treated differently. Substantive equality has some important parts. Firstly, there is a need for the equality of opportunity. Both men and women should have the same opportunity to access their rights, and they should not be restricted. For example, opportunities to be a politician, doctor, or taxi driver should be equal. Secondly, there should also be an equality of results. Just because laws are in place, or that opportunities are open to women, 
does not mean that women get treated equally. For example, in most countries, there are no laws against women becoming politicians or being on the board of a company, but still, women make up much less than 50% of these positions. The formal equality for women is not enough to ensure their equal representation. To have equality of results, some corrective approaches may be needed. Corrective approaches are recognized in CEDA Article 4, which says temporary special measures aimed at accelerating de facto equality between men and women shall not be considered discrimination, though they must be stopped when the equality of opportunity and treatment have been achieved. These special measures are sometimes known as the transformative approach, which argues that policies, laws, and other activities should be introduced to transform women's position and role in society to be equal. Social values, cultural beliefs, and unequal power relations in society all need to be transformed to ensure women are given the same opportunities as men. For example, a law requiring women to be appointed into government or requiring that company boards have a certain percentage of women will transform the role women play and how these organizations address women's concerns. Let's now have a brief overview of the CEDAW Treaty. CEDAW came into force in 1981, after a decade of activism on women's rights, including the United Nations Year of the Women, in 1975. The convention has been widely ratified, including all Southeast Asian countries. The convention is not strictly on the rights of women, but on eliminating discrimination against women, and it identifies around 12 areas of discrimination, including culture, politics, nationality, education, employment, health, economics, the protection of rural women, development, marriage, and family. Let's now look at the status of CEDA in Southeast Asia. All Southeast Asia countries have ratified CEDA. In Southeast Asia, there are still four countries without a specific laws for domestic violence. These countries are Brunei, Myanmar, Laos, and Singapore. There are also five countries which do not clearly make marital rape a crime. These are Brunei, Indonesia, Myanmar, Laos, and Singapore. Now, if we talk about maternity protection, then we can say that all countries have legislation on this matter. Two countries, Indonesia and Laos, extend such protection to all workers. And in other countries, mostly domestic workers and women employed in informal sector are excluded. On women in politics, three countries have had female head of a state, but looking at the numbers of female politicians, it is quite low. The biggest representation is East Timor, with nearly 40%, but two countries, Brunei and Thailand, have less than 10% of the politicians being female. Let's look at two areas where gender discrimination is common in Southeast Asian countries. First is the area of work. Women in Southeast Asia are quite active in labor force, meaning that there is generally a higher percentage of women participating in the economy. Although in Indonesia and Malaysia, the percentage is lower. In any case, women still face different forms of discrimination in the world of work. While it is more common, for example, for women and men to receive equal pay for equal work, there is still gender wage gap in many Southeast Asian countries. Moreover, women are more likely to work in part-time jobs or they are concentrating in the care work or what ILO classifies as the 5C occupations, namely caring, cashiering, catering, cleaning, and clerical, which have lower pay. Also at the workplace, it is more difficult for women to get promotion, as women are more likely to take leave to have children and take care of them, and that means interruptions for the career growth. The head of companies or member of the boards are also often men, who are not usually sensitive to the needs of women and the challenges faced by female employees. And finally, at the workplace, women can face different forms of sexual harassment and they may not be protected by the law from this. The second area of discrimination is the sphere of politics. 
According to the Global Gender Gap Index, the level of women's participation in Southeast Asia is generally low, with the exception of Philippines and East Timor, having somewhat higher number of women in legislative positions. Otherwise, all Southeast Asian countries have many more male than female politicians. Although it is good that three Southeast Asian countries have had female heads of state, women still make up on the average only about one in four politicians. There are many factors which limit women's participation in politics, including the patriarchal culture that sees women's primary roles as being responsible for the home and the family. Therefore, women have limited interest, support, and access to resources and training to enable them to contest and be elected for political positions. And for the small number who are elected, women tend to be given less important jobs in the government, like being the head of women's affairs or children's affairs, while men have important positions, like being the head of Ministry of Foreign Affairs or Finance. As a result, Women's needs and concerns are not taken into consideration in political and economic policies. There are many efforts by women's groups to fight against discrimination and to promote women's rights in the region. However, there are also many challenges. In the next session, we'll hear from some experts about what are some of the challenges to women's rights in Southeast Asia. In Southeast Asia, Women and men are not treated equally, as we observed elsewhere globally. Uh, men and women uh, face discrimination um, at various ways, but for women, it's much more profound. We have seen structure is built as such over the past several thousand years um, that women's opportunities are simply not there. To start with, we can say discrimination uh, literally um, is structured in three different layers, concentric layers. The, at the very center, we have seen women themselves often are not unleashing their potential. Uh, then at various other ways, women's um, um, opportunities are robbed in a way that we see um, that uh, women and the society, culture, and the state um, itself are designed um, not to open up for women. Um, in areas, for example, um, families, um, somewhere women should be protected most. Um, we have uh, observed inequalities between family members. It starts with very, uh, something very small, like distribution of food, um, and then goes on to other layers, for example, access to education, access to healthcare, um, right to properties, um, or um, uh, you know, um, their voices uh, deciding who to marry to. Uh, then it comes to the external sector where women are also robbed from their opportunities. To give you an example, if you look at uh, sectors like agriculture, politics, um, private sector, those huge big uh, structures are such where women's roles are very limited or often shunned. Therefore, women are simply not there. So there's a big piece of missing women in Southeast Asia. One of the biggest challenges for women in Southeast Asia to gain equal rights has to do with traditional values, which do not consider women to be equal to men. These traditional values are embedded in culture and religion, and they are based on the belief that women are inferior to men. Such traditional values are a target of CEDO, but also these issues are controversial. Should human rights take precedence over traditional culture? This issue has been examined in CEDO, and we are now going to look at the relevant article and how CEDAW responds to these traditional values. CEDAW Article 5 on modifying the social and cultural patterns is much debated. The article says, State parties shall take all appropriate measures to modify the social and cultural patterns of conduct of men and women with a view to achieving the elimination of prejudices and customary and all other practices which are based on the idea of the inferiority or the superiority of either of the sexes or on stereotyped roles for men and women. Some interpret this article to mean there is a conflict between cultural values and human rights and that human rights is trying to ban or eliminate cultural values. There are many cultural values based on treating women differently. For example, that women should not do the same jobs as men or hold political position 
or that women should wear certain kinds of clothes. Traditionally, it was believed that women should stay at home, and they should not get the same freedoms as men. However, Article 5 says that states should modify these cultural patterns. But is this going to eliminate the culture? Culture is viewed in SIDO as a dynamic and evolving practice. The culture practiced today is different than it was two or three generations ago. As young women today see their role in society, their careers, and their position in the family very different from their own grandmothers. This is because culture changes. And if it is going to change, it makes sense that those changes include women's equality. Social and cultural values towards women, mostly discriminatory and negative, um, are slowly disappearing with the help of education and work opportunities for women. Southeast Asian countries are doing really great with this regard, especially if we compare these countries with their um, neighboring South Asian countries or North African countries. Um, to me, one of the biggest uh, indicators of any achievement is to see what is the kitchen like in any particular household or a country and where are the women in public space. If you go to any places in Southeast Asian countries, especially in Thailand, you'll see in marketplace women are buzzing. Uh, they are the shopkeepers managing money. That certainly is a very good indicator. Having said all these, we know that uh, cultural values uh, are still there that often hold women back. Um, I would say if we keep doing what we are doing, making sure women are um, getting education, uh, given opportunities to work, uh, we can actually battle some of these sociocultural values that put women down. Another issue of extreme importance is violence against women. Across the region, thousands of women are killed or injured by their intimate partners each year. There are also estimates that as many as 25% of women regularly face domestic violence at home. Law enforcement officers have been weak in protecting women and girls, and until recently, not much has been done. Violence against women has both in immediate and long-term impacts on physical, psychological, and mental health of victims. Moreover, it affects and impedes the progress in other areas of women's lives. Let's look at reasons why domestic violence is so prevalent and what can be done to stop it. Violence against women. Women face much more violence and threats of violence than men. However, throughout history, there have been few attempts to protect women from this violence. There are terms associated with this crime which need to be explained. Firstly, violence against women covers any form of violence which is directed at women because they are women. This can be anywhere, at work, school, or on a public street. While laws of assault should protect women from this violence, there has been a practice of blaming the woman for getting herself in a situation where she is attacked, for example, by wearing inappropriate clothes. What a woman wears should not in any way legitimate a crime. Another term is domestic violence. This is violence that happens in a private home and is typically when a man physically and mentally abuses his partner. Domestic violence can include violence against children and in a small number of cases where men are abused by a woman. Culturally, Domestic violence is often considered the private affair of a family, and the police should not intervene. However, women are far more likely to be murdered by their intimate partner than by a stranger. So the practice of not intervening fails to protect them from their greatest threat. A term used more commonly now is gender-based violence. This includes violence against a person because of their gender role which may include transgender or LGBT people. Gender-based violence recognizes that the violence is because people do not conform to their gender expectations. So a woman is not doing what is expected of her in the household. In most of Southeast Asian countries, laws against domestic violence are a recent phenomena. Previously, a husband beating a wife was considered a private matter and could be socially acceptable. Similarly, there was no law against a husband raping a wife 
or what is called marital rape in Southeast Asia. In fact, the majority of Southeast Asian countries do not criminalize a husband raping a wife. More recently, through activities linked to CEDAW and women's rights, laws have appeared to criminalize the violence and protect women. Though across the region, some estimates are that 30% of women face some form of violence. The class will now finish by briefly discussing the concept of intersectionality. Looking back at all the acts of discrimination covered in this class, for this last session, it is important to point out that women are not a homogeneous group, and so they may experience discrimination differently. This would depend on their other identities and status, such as age, ethnicity, citizenship status, religion, sexuality, physical and mental abilities, and their health condition and status. So, women from an ethnic group may face stronger discrimination because both her gender and ethnicity. This is the phenomenon of intersectionality, where discrimination based on one particular identity or status intersects with another, given a double disadvantage. <laughs>